Hey, welcome to a special edition of Teaching Tuesday. Today, we're really excited. We've got a vendor visitor with us. Uh, my name is Scott Rohde. I'm the product sales manager here. And I want to go ahead and uh, have him introduce himself. If you would take a look over here. Hey, Scott. Thanks. I'm Joe Hosinski. I'm the national sales manager for Norcold. Norcold is a leader in mobile refrigeration. Been in the business for 70 years. And that was one of the questions I was going to ask him. There's, there's a lot of companies out there. And when you're looking at a new RV and you're comparing Surveyor to others, we are using Norcold throughout, okay? Yep. And there are 12 volt refrigerators that have really jumped in on the scene. So this is gonna be an opportunity for us to ask Joe questions about the 12 volt refrigerator compared to the, the traditional two-way refrigerator, which is uh, the gas electric. So we're gonna go down that road together. Okay, sounds great. So 66 years you guys been in the business. Yeah, leaders in mobile refrigeration, been working in the RV industry, truck industry, marine industry. And it says Thetford, some of you might see that. What, yep. what, what is that? So um, we also own Thetford Corporation, which is your uh, toilet that's in okay. your surveyor. So if you would, we've got lined up here. This is the backside. This is what most of you are not gonna see. You're gonna see the brand name on the front. And we want you to look for that Norcold brand name. So on the back here, we're looking at, this is the 12 volt refrigerator. And then over here is the traditional two-way. Why don't we start here real Sounds quick? Good. Yeah, so basically there's two types of technology for mobile refrigeration. One's called the gas electric or gas absorption system. The other one is a 12 volt system. This system's been the backbone of the RV industry since you know, 60, 70 years now. And it's basically a system that burns LP, creates a chemical reaction, which basically works like a still almost. It evaporates heat out of your box to create a, uh, a cold environment for your refrigerator. So it's a gas absorption system and it runs on LP. And when you're plugged in through a landline, it's also 110 volt, so. So stay right here for a second. Yep. So this is something that folks are gonna, if you've RV'd before, you'll know on the sidewall of your coach, you'll have vents for a refrigerator, right? That's exactly and this right. And this, again, this is an advantage to Norcold. I asked Joe this earlier, where's the hose for condensation on this? Yeah, we have a drip cup built in. So we've designed the refrigerator to prevent ice and frost buildup. But if any builds up or any uh, any condensation builds up, there's channels in the back of the refrigerator and it'll drip into this cup here. But it doesn't produce that much water, so it's not going to spill over. Some of our competitors actually have to run a hose outside the coach, uh, you know, to get rid to evacuate any condensation. But we were we work to avoid condensation in our refrigerators. And Joe, that's something too that I've, I've noticed since we switched over to you guys. If you're out there looking, you'll see this black vent and yep. then you'll see a white hose come out, not with Norcold. Yeah, don't need it for ours. And so our vents are basically just to cool the unit. So this is a this is a system that actually creates uh, energy. It burns LP, creates a chemical reaction in this box. So this thing will actually heat up and then it evaporates warm air in the box creates it and creates cold air. And so you need to have two vents to cool this off. And that's air coming in the bottom, runs across the fins and then out the top of the RV. Hopefully y'all got that. Let's walk over to this yeah, 12 volt. Sure. You can see the differences right away, right? So what yeah. am I looking at back so here? A 12 volt system is a compressor system. It's a sealed, a sealed system that compresses Freon, just like your home refrigerator does. Uh, it's all based in this compressor down here at the bottom. And so it's it's filled with R600A, which is the latest Freon that's in the marketplace, environmentally friendly, 50 state legal, Europe, Europe legal. Um, it compresses, just like an air conditioning system, uh, this chemical and creates a chemical reaction to create cold inside the refrigerator. And then when we go down here, we were talking about the condensation in a two-way, right? Yeah. So that was the cup here. Yes. And then down here is a, a, Same another thing. Cup. Yeah, so our computer system, we'll get to that in a little bit. We try to prevent any kind of frost buildup, but if any condensation builds up, it goes through a channel, comes through a little pipe out here and into this drip cup. That's a quart drip cup. It never fills up. But in the event that you would have it, it goes into this system. The coil for the compressor goes through the drip cup. That's warm. It'll actually flash off any condensations in there. So you don't need to have a, um, a hose outside to drip condensation. It should prevent, it basically makes no condensation, but if it does, it's gonna go in there and then flash off on the coil. You don't have to worry about that. Let me walk over towards the coach for a second. Yep. What we're talking about here is the refrigerator in this unit is right in this area, all right? Mm -hmm. Normally you'd have those panels yeah, and yes. the hose would be dripping out right underneath your awning area. None of that with the two-way or the 12 volt with Norco. Yeah, you know, and having a sealed uh, sidewall, it's not serviceable. So there's nothing in the back of the refrigerator that you have to check for maintenance. 
Um, and so one less hole, one less opportunity for rain to get in and cold air and so on. Yeah, now don't be misled because the two-way still has that, but you don't have the water coming out. That's exactly right. Yeah, let's go back over towards this way. Okay, on the back there, I think we covered it pretty good. Right down there would be on the two ways where the pilot light is and it stuff, is. right? Pilot light's in this area right here. This is a burner box and this is an exhaust tube and this creates heat. And so again, it has to, it burns LP, so you have to exhaust the fumes. I thought that was pretty cool to point out. Yep. We didn't point this out in the beginning, but I do want to now. Look yep. what Joe brought you all, okay? So if you're watching here today and you get a chance, if you like this video and you share this video, we will randomly select up to three people to get a cool Norco Polar hat. There you go. Actually, um, demand the bear. That's right. You polar didn't even say that in the beginning, but they yeah. should demand the polar bear. Yeah, that's our logo is the polar bear because it's cold. And our website <laughs> also has your flyer on it. It does. Well, let's turn around this um, 12 volt one here. And you can see how they ship it to us. Nice protection going down the line yep. until it gets ready to be delivered and so forth. We take that off before then, but. So we designed the uh, 12 volt refrigerators to have residential features. So it is a stainless steel refrigerator. These are foam filled doors for extra insulation. And like Scott says, we ship it to the factory this way just to prevent any damage on the production line and while it gets shipped to the dealer. But yeah, it's a solid stainless steel door, upper and lower, and it's magnetized so you can put magnets on it. I'm gonna show something in here because I've been in the business a while, like Joe has. Yep. We had a brand before that didn't have all this kind of storage and we didn't have this. And it's a pretty well-known brand. Yeah. Um, tell us about some of the storage yeah, in so, here. So, you know, one of the other great things about this that allows us to have more storage is that the compressor system takes less space than a gas absorption system. So in the same size opening, you get an eight cubic foot of, of refrigeration in a gas system, you get 10 in a 12 volt system. So we, we were able to make a bigger box for more storage because again, the compressor is a lot smaller than the gas system. And so that allowed us to put adjustable shelves in it, upper and lower, all glass shelves with a lip, nothing's gonna fall off. Uh, they are fixed in place. So once you get it set the way you like it, you put a screw back in here and you lock the shelf in place so it doesn't bounce around when you're going down the highway. Let's see inside where all the goodies are. Same thing. I mean, you'll see everything you'll see in high-end home refrigerators, you're gonna see in the North Cold refrigerator, clear bins, uh, adjustable shelving. You've got a slider shelf in the middle for milk jugs or uh, other tall bottles. You have clear crisper bins at the bottom. It has super bright LED lighting in it. So when you open the door, the lights come on. And these are all adjustable too. So these are some great features that you'll find on this model. One of the things that Joe, you, you pointed out to me when we were discussing doing this together, yeah. they're not all created equal. So when you're out there, you're gonna see somebody that might have 10.7 yes, or whatever. Tell us about well, the cubic storage in here. Yeah, so we use international standards that you'd find in the home business. There's a regula regulatory industry that comes out to actually measure refrigerators. So we use those type of measurements. So there's real measurements and there's marketing measurements. This is a 10 cubic foot capacity. Some that are state that they're higher capacity, a little bit more of a marketing term more than anything else. They rounded it up, I guess I would say. So that's a pure 10 foot cubic capacity. And again, hopefully when you're watching this and you're going to make this big investment in buying yeah. a, a, a travel trailer, you're going to consider Surveyor. And this is one of the many reasons. What Joe was telling me earlier too is, Norcold is a refrigeration company. Right. A lot of, I don't know if there is another brand doing the 12 volt that is an actual refrigeration company, but tell us about yeah, some of these other that's competitors. That's exactly right, Scott. So uh, Norcold's in Sydney, Ohio, north of Dayton, uh, USA company and we design and build our refrigerators from the ground up. And so some models that are out there will take a home unit, a residential unit, and have the compressors change from 110 AC to 12 volt, and which is relatively simple to do. And they just put their name on it, right? They do, but the problem is, is energy use. So we have a, a unique compressor, a, a computerized system that we design, designed to maximize battery life, but then also maximize cooling. And we've hit that perfect sweet spot. So. Um, and when we do uh, different tests and length of run, ours is the longest running refrigerator in the market on 12 volt. And it's the most consistent in power because we do design it from the ground up. And he's, he's still being a little bit modest, right? <laughs> because this is one of the big differences between Norcold right up here. Tell us about that yeah. board. So one of the things that we've uh, learned through some field testing is people want to be able to adjust the refrigerator. And so we have a full digital uh, display and digital uh, memory system here. And so how this works, you, you press this button to hold and hold it to turn it on and the light will flash. And it'll give you a setting of one through five. And you can individually adjust the temperatures of the refrigerator or the freezer by 
hitting the freezer button or the refrigerator and going up and down. The higher the number, the colder it gets. Great thing about the system, it has memory. So after you put it in storage and you go back up to your next trip, it's gonna remember the way you like your refrigerator set. and It'll turn on automatically to that. Other people have an analog system. It's a turn dial, it's a slider bar. It's what we call a dumb system. It doesn't have uh, the ability to sense temperature and therefore it's just, it's either on and off and you're just playing with the dial until you get it the way you want it. Ours is all programmed that way um, well, for individual settings. These are real important things. Yeah. If you're a first time buyer, a lot of times what they do is they, they don't get this type of information until their yeah. second time or third time. So I appreciate that. This other setting, if you point it out, if you've got it, I mean, there was a 12 volt system that didn't even have an on off that right. we used before. Yes. Okay. So, but you also have, uh, what's that little moon yeah, setting so and stuff? This is actually our night mode, this moon setting. And so what this does, compressors have a little bit of a buzz to them. Ours already is the quietest compressor in the marketplace by 10 decibels. We take it one step further. Um, you press this button and what it'll do is reduce your compressor speed for eight hours. So the thought is at night, you're not gonna be getting the refrigerator all night long. And so your doors are gonna be shut. It's gonna be sealed system. It's gonna be cold. You hit this button, and it reduces decibels by 10 more decibels. So down to 34 decibels, which is, you know, we say it's as quiet as a library. <laughs> 34 decibels. And it's, so, well, you know, you have guests with you and they're on the dinette and they're sleeping, you know, on the fold out and so on. You don't want to hear any buzzing at all. So compressors buzz, this one's extremely quiet. And whether you have guests, that is a really good point, but there's a lot of tra travel trailers that are pretty small too, yeah. where they're sleeping and it's, you know, not too yes. far away. Absolutely. There. So when we look at these settings, now we took some pictures earlier with mm -hmm. all this lit up, but we wanted to show everybody kind of the skeleton here, right? Yes. The inside and out. Um, I got a couple questions from some of our viewers here. Do they ever need to defrost these refrigerators? You know, this is a frost-free refrigerator by design. So it does not have a defroster element in it. In a home refrigerator, what that does is basically has a heater element in it and goes in and melts ice. Okay. These things, uh, the brain senses the temperature. It sends free onto the upper and lower box to keep it at a consistent temperature. Hardly cre creates any condensation at all. If it does, again, it'll melt off when you turn the refrigerator off and go through that outside cup. But the non mobile refrigeration doesn't have defroster systems in it by default because they are such an energy hog. One of the things that came up and, and this is happening more and more. And they use the term boondocking. Yeah, well, absolutely. boondocking can be a Walmart parking lot. It can be um, a rest area. Sure. So it's coming up. We have solar panels on our roof mm -hmm. and then the size of battery people buy is very, very important. Should anybody be concerned with a 12 volt refrigerator if they wanted to boondock? Yeah, so not with ours. So it's designed for long stays on the road without auxiliary power. And so uh, since we have the lowest energy use in the marketplace, we've designed this refrigerator to run to at least 40 hours on one standard coach battery. So a standard battery is a 72 amp battery, uh, usually Trojan battery, whatever your dealer will supply to you. That gives you 72 amps of power in that battery pack. This is a low energy use. It only runs about 50 amps in a 24 hour period. So in essence, you can run 40 hours on your coach battery consistently while you're traveling to your campsite or wherever you're going without worrying about the refrigerator shutting off. And that's just one 24 deep cycle battery, it you is. know, layman's turns. Yep. A 27 deep cycle battery holds more amp hours as well, It does, it? yeah. And so it all depends on the batteries you use. So if you put two batteries on your oh my, coach in yeah. series, you use lithium ion, whichever you choose to upgrade to, that'll extend your stay on 12 volt power before you have to recharge. Now keep in mind, before you go on your trip, you're usually plugged in, you cool down the, co the refrigerator, you get your coach ready for travel. At the same time, you're charging your battery. So when you leave home, your, your coach battery is fully charged and then you, the clock starts running as far as how long you can run it. Then you have to repower it. Yeah, and that's the thing. We're talking about just running these without giving them any charge at all. That's right. You know what I mean? So days on end. It is. It and is. yeah, you know, the lithium batteries are coming down, but it, the 27 deep cycle, you can get up to 100 amps. There you go. You know so. what I mean? So you get a couple of those there. You're going to be fine for days without doing anything. However, we have solar panels, so we're charging them the whole time. Yeah. This was the other question. We're talking about going down the road, and this is something I learned recently. Yes. Okay. Two-way refrigerators is what we're used to. So we run the gas going down the road. This is, I'm going to let Joe answer this because we literally talked to his engineer right beforehand to confirm sure. it. What do you guys recommend? 
Well, so we recommend you don't run LP going down the highway for this reason. As you're traveling down the highway, you've got your exterior vents. We don't know which way the wind's gonna blow. These guys do a great job of baffling the interior so it gets that chimney effect to get the heat out of the refrigerator department. But if the wind blows, it can blow your pilot light out. When it blows the pilot light out, the refrigerator goes out. And so we recommend you don't use LP while you're traveling. Yeah, it's not just that, because you've got live gas line in too, right? Is, you've got right. an active gas line in. Yeah, and there's some states, it depends on where you are in the U.S. or Canada, sure. but there's tunnels that don't allow LP to be used while you're in the tunnel and things along those lines. So, you know, do people do it? Absolutely. We recommend it just for that reason, because it can blow the flame out. And we certainly, as a manufacturer, recommend doing what the uh, manufacturer tells us. So we say, don't run them down the road, which makes 12 volt even more valuable, because you can run yeah, this down the you road. You can run forever, really. You can run it while it's on. You, you, everything's cold while you're getting to your destination. And then, you know, again, back on the powering side with, with solar panels, you can easily repower your pad, your battery pack. So this thing runs continuously forever. But Joe, that's a big deal because most people are going to load ahead of time. They are. They're going to plug in. Yep. Right. And then they're going to go from A to B. All right. This you can leave on the whole time. Absolutely. So again, yeah. it's just another advantage. If you look at Severe, we do use both. But in Indiana, this plant, we're 100% 12 volt right now. We switched over to that. Um, let's see, I got another question here. I think we might have covered this. Um, is there anything about Norcold that is different than some of your competitors we haven't mentioned? Yeah, so that's the biggest thing. I mean, again, so being the leaders in mobile refrigeration, it's all about expertise. Little things you wouldn't think about uh, on a refrigerator for uh, for mobile applications, we can we put in. So if they take the home residential 12, uh, AC system and convert to 12 volt, one of the simplest little things you'll see out there is some of the folks don't have door locks. Oh so my ours goodness. latch automatically. <clears throat> and so you have to push this button to get in and on the side. But that just keeps the doors from swinging open while you're in travel. You'll see seat belt straps and T-bars and little things like that are kind of rigged together to keep the doors closed, things like that. Uh, again, I'm the only system in the market that's a digital control panel. It's the only one that's fully customizable. It's the lowest energy use in the marketplace. It has the longest battery life in the, mar in the marketplace. So by far, it's the best refrigerator out there. So you're so right, because I personally, in the beginning of the 12 volt days, we had straps coming across. Couldn't figure out how to keep these closed. If you have one of those units, you know exactly what we're talking about. But this little handle that you all created, um, it exceeds anything else I'll, I've seen. It's the basics of it, but yeah, you have to, it's designed for mobile use. It's not a home refrigerator. There's a big difference. As far as I can tell, 12 volt down the road is not a problem. It is not down, you know, you can definitely It's actually a benefit in a lot of ways. It is, yeah. So in, so in areas where you were gonna blow the flame out, turn it off, things like that, your refrigerator remains cold while, while you're traveling. But when you're out there, we're gonna say, look for no cold, look for, it's number one. It's number one. We're going to say it another way, man. We're going to say demand the bear. Don't forget to hit like or share, like and share. And then you're eligible to win one of these hats. And we appreciate that from Joe. Um, so Norcold.com, any more questions on the refrigerator? And of course, your, your uh, surveyor websites have all the details of what we talked about today. And we also have that flyer. We have a PDF on our literature yep. that you've provided us. And uh, man, I appreciate you coming out you here. I enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. Uh, again, Everyone that's watched today, look for forestriverinc.com slash surveyor to see more on Norcold. Also look at our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our Instagram. Thank you all and uh, enjoy the journey. Appreciate you coming out here.